video I guess my sort of state of mind began to bleed through into my videos and I was in a very dark place which I am most of the time but and perhaps my viewers picked up that I was in a particularly dark spot and the outpouring from all of the people who watch my videos was heartening and, and made me feel much better uh, about things. Not about things generally, I still think we're doomed, but maybe on a personal level, some of this consciousness raising from friends, uh, people of goodwill lifted my spirits. And I realized that the comments are a large part of the reason that I continue to, to make these. I think I'm going to go into making some shorter videos on a more regular basis because sometimes I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to making videos and I, it takes too long. So I'm going to do more off the cuff stuff, make it a little bit uh, more regular. Yeah, I got some incredible comments from people. I was in a dark mood when I did my last video uh, called Why Bother? <laughs> And I got a lot of answers to that question, why bother? Good, good answers, uh, practical answers for improving my mental state, my sense of well-being. And I thank you all for that. There's some very thoughtful comments and some interesting ones. One in particular was from a fellow, I assume he's a fellow, DNF with Jack Mack. Now, Jack, I'm going to see if you have a channel in videos uh, because, it, I don't know, it's hard to tell just from the the little thumbnail, but if you do, I'll be over there shortly. Um, serious question, boomers. How did your generation go from peace, love, and granola to where it ended up? I imagine the anti-establishment types, so often peddled in the media, were an extremely small minority. Yes, indeed. Very true. How did this go? How did this go from our culture go from peace and love and granola to to Reagan and conservatism and trickle down. I'll, I'll tell you really how I see it and how I lived through it. I think back when the anti-war, in the anti-Vietnam days, uh, it, was, it was a bit different from the constant war that we live with today in that people were coming home dead, and neighbors' children were coming home dead in body bags. And we were a huge generation of boomers. I'm a little on the young side to be a boomer. Uh, <laughs> young is comparatively speaking. I know to uh, some of you I am like uh, grandfather time, but that's cool. Uh, what happened in my estimation, is that the, the whole movement was co-opted. And this was done with propaganda, uh, with not just propaganda, but a whole cultural onslaught. When the anti-war movement and the hippies and that became too dangerous, people started to see them as cool and different. And really, it was a small minority of people. Because you've got to remember, for the majority of people in the 1960s, it was a button-down conservative time. It wasn't really... I mean, there was, there, there was a counterculture, an effective counterculture, uh, who had underground magazines and newspapers. What happened over time was that because hippies and anti-war people and that began to acquire the reputation as being cool, a little bit more interesting than your average button-down conservative type. <laughs> he's, he's really pissed off that I closed the blinds to make a video. <laughs> Gandhi, don't do that. <laughs> I tell you, 
you know, if it weren't for pets, I don't know where we would be because pets do make us laugh and make us happy, even as they drive us completely bonkers sometimes, but it's just like people, right? So anyway, where was I? Yes, okay, so the, the anti-war movement. And slowly the media began to take on its own take, and, and its own take on what it meant to be anti-establishment. I've got a robin's nest right outside here. And uh, he's very interested in it, and I, I suppose he just wants to say hello. <laughs> anyway, sit down and, and, and calm down so we can talk to the people. Thank you. Thank you. This is Gandhi, my hairy cat, who leaves tumbleweeds of fur everywhere in the house that requires an industrial strength vacuum. Okay. Distractions, distractions, always distractions. Okay, so what happened was that the television began to show its own take on what was happening. And of course, this is culturally, I'm talking about growing your hair long. My God, back in the 60s, if somebody had long hair, people hated them, but slowly, Everybody started to follow the lead of these fake hip TV shows and things. We had totally cult been culturally appropriated by the media. And what happened was soon you had executives and accountants wearing their hair long because that's what women tended to like at the time. I know it's hard to believe. So what really happened was the cultural appropriation of the symbols of the movement and the watering down of the message so that it was form over substance. You had shows on television like Mod Squad, which are hilarious to watch from today's point of view because they were so completely unlike what was going on under the radar. They were made to appropriate the message and therefore dilute it. And after the war ended in 1975, there was no, by that time, there was no effective peace movement. There were people wearing their hair long and disco was the beginning of the end of the age of Aquarius, so to speak. Uh, I hated disco. I, I, <laughs> I hated it with a passion because I saw it for the soulless uh, hedonism that it was. And it was the age of polyester shirts and uh, platform boots and ridiculous fashions. They had been weaned off of the anti-war, anti-establishment sentiment by the disco era and we began a pattern of having possessions equaled being cool, wearing the right clothes equaled being cool, rather than just being yourself being cool, which had been up until the, perhaps the 70s, uh, the predominant message. But it was all, it was all co-opted. And after the war was lost in Vietnam, and I can remember in 1975 watching news clips of, of uh, U.S. helicopters being dumped into the water so the enemy wouldn't get them. And after the loss, I think the powers that be said, this can never happen again. We can't have a mass movement of people uh, preventing, preventing war and bloodshed. It wasn't that we were very much different in reality to today's generation. Some of us maintained our sense of identity throughout the years. I was going to anti-war protests in the 
in the 90s, you know, the desert storm and everything. And I was, I was involved in uh, speaking out against what I saw. And, and I was an anomaly. I was, I was in my 30s then, and still people would look at me like he hasn't grown, grown up because the cultural message at that time through television and magazines and everything was that we are becoming more conservative. And this this kept being pushed and pushed and pushed. We are more conservative as a culture. Well, it wasn't that people were more conservative. It's that, that it was more mass media manipulation and uh, becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. And any time those of us on the left would fight back with some sort of an, a song or or a uh, a meme it would be countered by and appropriated. I can actually remember this song, Tracy Chapman talking about a revolution. Great song, great message behind it. The next thing I know, I saw it on one of these news, TV news magazine programs being appropriated and they were playing that as they showed cops breaking in doors to fight the drug war and it was a time in the 80s where we had gone from the late 70s as far as things like marijuana where it came close to being acceptable and legal to all of a sudden in the 80s marijuana was lumped in with heroin and crack and all this stuff and drugs the message was throughout the media um, drugs are bad okay and this was pushed and pushed and pushed and of course they would always equate pot put lump it in with all the other the other nastier drugs and we have to fight this war and if you are smoking pot you are supporting terrorism these this shit was going on and i had enough hatred directed at me just for my appearance particularly in the 80s because I had long hair and a beard I haven't changed that much uh, the beard is now white and the back is a little stooped but I'm still the same guy but I was treated with derision and, and just people would look at me these yuppie types and, and look just disgusted like oh he never grew up well growing, growing up means turning into a yuppie uh, planet eating scumbag I'm, I'm guilty that I never grew up and I'm pleased that I, ne I will never grow up into and morph into what the cultural establishment wants me to be can't do it so that is how, in a quick summation, what happened to the peace and love generation. Uh, it never really existed as an entire homogenous generation. It was always like most left-wing things under the radar. So thank you, DNF, with Jack Mack for uh, leaving that very very thought-provoking comment and thank you to everyone who who gave me some hope and um deanne wrote a beautiful comment to me and basically the gist of it is that we can't do anything about the big picture really as in individuals or you know some people maybe are incredibly influential and do something uh, they're usually co-opted long before they are able to do anything like that uh, but the the gist of what she said is, is, is that we've got to focus on individually what we can do and raising the collective consciousness and I realized that is why I continue to make these videos and I try and answer all of the comments uh, sometimes I'm not able to uh, for various reasons, because I'm too lazy usually, but I'm, I'm very grateful for the words of wisdom um, from Deanne, from a lot of people, a lot of people just make me feel good about continuing to 
do this channel and it's not easy it doesn't come easy to me because I'm naturally kind of a shy person believe it or not I, I have my extroverted moments but generally I'm under the radar and that's why this show is under the radar and probably will stay really low under the radar uh, and I'd like to say a, a thank you to uh, Hambone at Humpty Dumpty Tribe. If you are subscribed to me and you are not subscribed to Humpty Dumpty Tribe, please go to Humpty Dumpty Tribe because he has 10 times the following that I do, and yet he has uh, found it in his heart to promote my channel, and I appreciate it and, and would encourage everybody to go over there and but warning you will find it somewhat depressing because you're going to be faced with stark truths but individually is is where we can do it and even if we don't change anything even if we make our corner of the world a little better for a day a week a month then it's worthwhile now Mike Bunch, he has a lot of positive, short little positive messages and he said uh, we must all keep our chins up and our heads above water as long as we can. Always look forward to your advice Chris, don't quit on us. Well I'm not planning to quit just yet. Uh, perhaps one day when I'm being wheeled out of here. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to try and keep keep this thing going. and try and raise the collective consciousness a little bit. I have the most amazing audience in the world and I value each and every one of you. Thank you for sticking around. And most people that watch my videos really watch them. You know, it's, it, they are a loyal bunch. And I find it ironic that I can't seem to grow the channel very fast. I get, I'm still getting the odd subscriber. Uh, trickling in here and, and there but once people are here they tend to stay and for that I'm very very grateful and I get to know people on a much more personal level than just if I were out there doing this to be a big tuber or whatever um, yeah I'm not so much a tuber as a root you notice that watching YouTube is getting harder and harder just because I can't understand <laughs> the insanity of them sending these recommended videos that are completely based on nothing I've ever watched and they even have a place for you to say you don't like it it don't matter <laughs> if that's the algorithm it's really fucked Fox News never gonna watch it uh, YouTube anybody from Google watching yeah, right like they even care uh, I'm not going to watch CNN but I'm not gonna watch any mainstream media on YouTube because that's what I always liked about YouTube. It wasn't mainstream media. So stop shoveling the right wing crap at me. Stop shoveling the conspiracy theories, the Q posts, the what the... I'm talking to Google like, it's like this monstrosity is ever going to hear anything I'm going to say. But everybody that's on YouTube knows after a while that it's, it's been co-opted like every other avenue of speech eventually is. I'm worried, like, I read this article th this morning that struck terror into my heart. And this was Emily, the assistant head of psychiatry at, at Harvard talking about the mental illness that Trump has. And it's serious. And the, the, the one thing that's stuck in my head and that, that just shot ice down my back. This statement, there has never been a malignant narcissist in political power that has not started a major war. And we're so close. We're on the precipice. And yet, the media acts as if nothing is changed that is normal. Why would you even take this man seriously? Obviously he's completely bonkers. The 
launching missiles threatening Russia. What the fuck? What the... You know, cutting welfare, attacking the poor, attacking immigrants. There was a murder on the border by the border patrol of a mother and child. Crops rotting in the fields in California because of racism. Oh, you, you're taking your jobs. Well, go pick some fucking lettuce, you assholes. Sometimes I get really angry. And, and then if I, if I don't get angry, then I turn it in, into depression, which I can't do anymore. So I'm going to express a little bit of anger. It's hopefully a loving anger, but somebody get this maniac out of office before it's too late. Can you wait till the midterms in November? How much damage do you think that he can do in that amount of time before you, anybody has a chance to vote on anything? Because nobody's stopping him. Nobody's invoking the 25th Amendment. The guy's clearly crazy. Are we going to have any sort of world left by November if somebody doesn't do something about removing this fascist, fanatical, narcissistic, insane, morally bankrupt, corrupt, steaming pile of dung from the most powerful office in the world? It's much easier to vote in a tyrant than to ever vote him out. This crazed, insane human being, and I use that word in quotation marks, is not, going to be, not only going to destroy America, but destroy any hope we have of a future if, if something is not done. And every day I read about more and more of the corruption, of the lying, of the compromised media, and waiting, just waiting for somebody to do something before it's too late. So thank you for listening to me, my friends, and be sure to leave comments. I would really like it if everybody on here shared it, because maybe I can pick up you know, five or six new subscribers and we can increase the circle. Out there somewhere are really good people that feel the same way that we do. And so uh, this is a call to draw it together. Maybe we can raise enough positivity to effect some change. If not in the big picture, then at least in our own lives. So thank you for watching. And I appreciate all the kind comments. I really do. I, they mean the world to me. All you kids, get off of my lawn!